All right, welcome back. Episode three of the XOT1 build series. Uh, last episode, we did suspension, and today we are going to go through the engine, fuel system, exhaust, gearbox, the CVT drive, axles, and the rear drive box. So today I got a little different. I got my buddy here, Chad, who um, is going to go through some of the engine components because when I was building the, the chassis and the suspension, uh, just to kind of put different people in different places, just for the sake of time, I said, gave him the engine. I said, hey, do some stuff to it, um, make it better. And um, Chad, I guess you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little about yourself. Well, I'd like to say, you also have the stipulation of, I don't want to spend any money I don't have to on it. So, with that in mind, it's very budget friendly, is what we've done. Still a lot more, but in reality, it helped it. I mean, I feel like it helped it. So, big thing here, port polished head and governor delete. How much horsepower did it start off with? About 16? Yeah, it was about 14, 16. Yeah. Just what the box would say at Harbor Freight. You know, you, you're rocking the 459 versus the 420. So you've got a little bit longer stroke inside of it, but outside of that internally, it's exactly the same. Just a longer stroke, which isn't as simple as it sounds sometimes. But we polished it. We're getting air in. We're getting air out. Slightly bigger intakes, smooth them out. So air will flow more harmoniously inside the head as it comes in. I know you went with the Makuni 34 here, which is like a jump up from, I think a 28 millimeter. Don't quote me on that, but so. once a bigger carburetor, once a quality carburetor, we deleted some linkage, you know, cause we deleted the governor. Um, you also decided to exhaust after that was done, welded up this stainless exhaust pipe, cut off the ends and I think it turned out pretty nice. Um, that being said, the muffler's Chinese, you know, straight pipe's always better, but the sound of quality, I like it better. So yeah, um, at this point, we're running the stock valve springs in it. It's kind of as a safety. Why? Because the flywheel's stuck. Still the plastic one can still blow up or cast. Um, so the valves will float, might bend the push rod, but it prevent the engine from blowing up. Well, the flywheel, I guess I should say. So there's that. Carburetor-wise, the Makuni, great option, came in. You had 3D printed this uh, curve thing. It looks great, but honestly, it works, but it's gonna have to be changed in the future. At this point, we're gonna get this thing assembled in this series, and then we'll fix that later. Why? Because it runs better than it did before. Just with the carburetor increase alone with the air restriction. So there's that. Another thing too, to keep in mind is, this is the Series 40 clutch. And if you look at it, it looks like a Christmas tree. And well, that was a learning curve. But double springing it up, gave it enough uh, tension that now it won't move when it idles. So Series 30 CVT, Series 40 forward neutral reverse box. And then we've got to talking about gear ratio early. And you know, this is two to one. And then our final output is four to one with the sprocket. Now, like Chris said, I'm sure at some point in his videos, versatility, engine modifications, put what you want into it. Yeah, 530 chain, pretty standard on a motorcycle. You find going down the highway if they're rocking the chain, um, means it can take the power. So I feel like from the chain on, the stuff you fabricated, make it work with this and I feel like some of your designs are pretty cool so I'll pass the mic back and give this back to you okay so a lot of the stuff I did on this table uh, was the fuel tank which was kind of a funny experience because I had built it once um, and I stayed up real night late one night and I was working on it and I was just like you know what I want to get this done one night I want to get on the car I want to start the engine up so I built the whole tank it took me about I don't know, maybe two or three hours. And then, you know, I've been I've been making fuel tanks for quite some time in my day job, but I kind of skipped a few steps that are kind of important in the whole process of building a fuel tank. 
is when I got to the point of actually pressure testing it and making sure it would hold fluid, I kind of skipped the step of putting a regulator on how much compressed air I was putting into the tank. And you're only supposed to have about 10 PSI in a fuel tank when you're pressure testing it. And I didn't do that. I just pumped enough air, was spraying the tank for with soapy water, looking for bubbles. And uh, one big explosion later, I'm looking at a fuel tank here, and the fuel tank is now over there, eight feet away. So that was, uh, that was a fun time. Uh, definitely had to kick myself in the butt on that one. So I ended up building this one which was the same design over again, uh, another three hours spent on a new tank. That one went great. I actually ended up using eighth inch aluminum for the whole tank rather than 093. On the fuel tank, we have a pulse pump, so we can actually, the fuel will come out of the petcock and the pulse pump will pull it from the bottom of the tank and raise it up to the top area where the engine, where the carburetor is at and deliver fuel. Um, Chad mentioned the exhaust, uh, the, the, uh, I think the stock exhaust tube, I think was about a, I think it was like an inch and eighth OD. And because we ported the head and gave me the everything larger flow, it actually increased to an inch and a half diameter. So I had to fabricate a whole new exhaust using stainless steel, uh, pre mandrel bent elbows, and then just threw on a good old Amazon Chinese muffler for great sound effects. Um, what's that? Don't forget about the gasket. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. So the um, so the exhaust on the on the on the manifold, um, because everything was bigger and the this, the the ID of the hole was bigger, I had to come up with a gasket. So luckily, I've got some resources. Meaning my wife, um, she was able to uh, use a Glowforge to actually CNC laser burnout. The gasket, which definitely helped me out because I didn't want to, have to sit there with an exacto knife or any other method, just sitting there trying to cut cut out an exhaust gasket. So that helped out. That was that was great. Um, on the back end, we have all of the components of the drive box. Um, so the box, basically on the outside end of it, will um, allow for all the suspension ar arms to mount to and articulate on, giving it a solid structure. But on the inside of it, we have the actual carrier that will have the pillow block bearings bolt onto, which will hold our center drive uh, spline shaft, which I think is an inch um, OD shaft, uh, and it is dimpled for the hubs. There are two smaller hubs on the inside of the carrier. One is to have our chain sprocket, and one is for our inboard mounted brake caliper. Um, and on the outside is some other homemade hubs. These are for the Miata Miata uh, mounting flanges, and these were just a uh, sprocket hub with some plate steel welded on there, and then weld nuts welded on the back of there to bolt the axles on. The axles are Mazda Miata axles, and um, if I would have used this, the axles as it, as it came with stock link, the back end of the car would look a little funky and it would end up being excessively wide. So by the time I got it all mocked up to where I wanted it, I actually ended up losing or cutting off an inch and a half length on the, on the shaft itself. And then uh, went and spliced that over with some, uh, I think it was inch, inch, inch and a quarter tube. Uh, so it was welded inside, uh, butted, and then sleeved and welded again. Um, what else do we have here? Got a LiPo battery. These, these are one of those NOCO batteries. These are great. Uh, they don't weigh a whole lot, and they do have quite a bit of power from the very, very small size they have. Um, and I think that's about everything. We already covered the Series 40 CBT and the Series 40 FNR box. And I think at this time, we're ready to start slapping some parts on a car, and we'll have all of our components to start an engine and get the wheel spinning or lack thereof wheels. So let's get to the building and then uh, we'll close this out.
Okay, so we got everything we just mentioned put on the car. Um, had a little bit of issues because somehow when you put a camera in front of somebody, they just lose all common sense. So there was a bit of a problem as far as actually the sequence of what parts need to go on first, not to uh, conflict with another part. But we got it all together. Um, and that's about it. I will kind of I will start it up just to kind of give a little bit of a spoiler how it sounds. All right, she runs. She just me missing a few more components until we can get this thing out of here. Um, we'll do next episode. We'll, we will do seat, steering wheel, steer, steering shaft linkage, linkage, uh, throttle cable, brakes. And pretty much everything else except for body panels, which will be the last fifth episode. So the last one's probably pretty short, but uh, after that, we can actually start getting outside and ripping and rolling. So what do you, what do you got for us, Chad? You got any more comments to this? Uh, it was a good day. Got my hands dirty. It was a good day. All right. Well, see you on the fourth episode.